Hello guys and welcome to Realistic Boiling Water Reactor. So this is a long-awaited guide on the cooling panel. I will uh, show it to you, how to operate it, because I know many people have problems with it, although it's not really that complicated. So yeah, it's early in the morning, let's head out to our job. Okay, so I have this reactor running on auto control on 20%. Uh, and we will play with this. So let me stop it. I will just set it up quickly and start explaining in a moment. Okay, so basically, we have these three devices, the hot well, the deorator, and the reactor. So they are represented here by these three levels, hot well level, deorator level, and reactor level. And basically, the water flows from top to bottom. And we also have three flows, so the steam flow, which tells us how much water comes into the hot well. The hot well hot flow tells us how much comes out and also how much comes in into the degrader. And the degrader outflow tells us how much outflows from the degrader it goes into the reactor. So that's basically it. So the steam flow, this is something we cannot like impact from this panel. This is mostly dictated by the reactor itself, the reactor power. The more power we produce here, the more steam it will generate and more steam will go through the turbine or bypass into the condenser and then hot well. So yeah, we cannot change this from this panel. We can a little bit uh, influence this, so let's say it's 356. If I say open bypass now, the pressure will start dropping. It means I'm taking more steam that is produced and you see this steam flow into the condenser increases. But generally this is only temporary. I mean the pressure would drop so uh, I cannot like keep it forever. If I want to keep it balanced I will come back to this figure shortly. Now we are building pressure so less steam is sent to the condenser and it should level out again at around 350. So basically we, we don't want to touch this, this is our like reference number and we want to just rely on what we get. So now we have these condensate pumps, so they pump out water from the hot well into the deurator and we have the flow here. So there are two of the pumps. If you are below 50%, you can use only one. It doesn't matter. If you disable both, the flow goes to zero. So basically, when it's set up like this, when th these two flows are almost the same, the hot wheel level will stay constant. Yes, because the same amount of water comes in, that goes out. So that's basically it. What we want to do is to match this flow with this flow. Okay, and the same goes for the feed water pumps. They take water from the deurator into the reactor, so they work independently. You can like use any of them you like or both. So again, when you match flows, they are almost matched now. Now again, the, what, the, the level of the deurator will remain constant. It's because the same amount of water comes in as comes out. And that's basically it. I mean, <laughs> the whole idea is to keep the levels constant matched. And if you do so, you are fine. Of course, 
we'll change the reactor power in a moment to see what happens when the reactor power changes. All we have to do is just to follow this top number to, to, to match the other flows. But okay, that, that, this, this is, these are the flows, but what we can also do, we can also transfer some water from some parts of the system to another. For example, now that the rater is quite low, we want to transfer some water inside. So if we want to take water from hot well, this is easy because it's just a matter of increasing this hot, hot well output. Let me just increase it a bit. So you will now see that the rater will rise. Hot well will drop, but it will drop much slower because hot well is just much larger than the durator, so in a moment you will see it will drop just a little while well, this, is, this is rising. Yeah, it dropped by one, 0 0.1 meters. Okay, anytime you want to again have this constant, just go back to matching the flows. Might be not very easy. Okay, this is this is okay. I mean you don't have to be really that precise. But say you want to increase the water level in the durator but taking water from the reactor. And by logic you cannot like take the water backwards, yes, from the reactor back to the durator. But assuming that water is constantly flowing around it's actually easy to do, because all you have to do is just reduce the outflow from the durator, so reduce the feed water pump, let me try it. So now, when the outflow from the durator is smaller than the inflow, the durator level will grow, and now the reactor level will drop. Again, it will drop slower than the durator, but it does. Yeah, that's how it works. So maybe let's wait until it drops until exactly three meters. Okay. Now I want to have everything stable, so again I'm trying to match the flows more or less. Okay, done. But now we can imagine another thing. Let's say the reactor is pretty high. I want to put the water from the reactor into the hot well. How can I do it? Well, or in reverse. I want to take the water from hot well into the reactor without changing the level of the durator. You can again do it, but this time you have to adjust both flows at the same time. So maybe for the beginning, let's say I will pump the water from hot well to the reactor. So obviously, if I want to decrease this level, I will have to increase the hot well outflow. And then, in order to keep the aerator constant, I want to increase the feed water to the same level. So let's try. Okay. Almost. So now, you can see the aerator will stay constant. Of course, it will change a little because this flow are, these flows are not identical, but you can see hot well is dropping and the reactor is rising. This is because I increased both of the pumps. So, what is flowing into the durator is the same what is flowing out, so it will more or less stay constant. But now both of these flows are larger than what hot well is gaining. So it will drop. And if this drops, the, level, the, the amount of water is constant, so this must increase. And again, if I want to do the opposite, so I want to reduce reactor and increase hot well, that's natural that if you want to reduce the reactor, you have to reduce the feed water pump, and again, match it with the condensate pump Let's try it. So you 
see now these two flows are constant again I mean same they have same values almost so the rater should stay more or less at the same level but now the outflows from hot well are smaller than the inflow so the hot well will increase and reactor will decrease that's basically it. That's, that's the whole idea of how this works so remember that your main goal is to match the flows and once you have the flows matched you can then play with setting this value to different uh, values yes, to move water from one part to another ok, let me balance this again That's it. Now I will increase the reactor power. I will pull the rods to make it quicker. This is on a pressure hold, so it's okay. So now as you can see, the power is increasing, the more water will boil. The pressure is rising, of course the auto control is opening the valve to keep the pressure constant. But this will cause more water to come into the hot well. So you see the hot well inflow is much larger so the hot well level rises the reactor level drops because more water is boiling but the feed water hasn't been changed yet so the only thing I need to do is to match these flows okay. because once we are changing power I will have to do it constantly so I can even try to set a little more now I put it at around 700 so now this should drop reactor should rise but due to increasing power this will catch up so yeah this is this is basically what we are doing we are just moving the flows match the hot well inflow so again and you can see somewhere around maybe 60% of power we will have to start using second pump for each system Again, we are above. Let's open more. And now, once we are 100% on the feed water pump, we need to use the other one to match the flows. Okay, that's that's basically it. Maybe let's put the power a little lower. I'll put it at 67 maybe percent, so we are already stopped. <coughs> and once the reactor is at a constant level, we just need to match this again. more or less yeah, so let's say it's matched and that, that's basically it. That's, that's the whole idea of operating uh, just to show you if we disable one pump we will get maximum 1000 kilograms per second of outflow, we cannot get more so on one pump even if you increase this nothing changes 
is also a way to find the malfunctions if you disable a pump and you have less than 1000 pump is malfunctioning. Okay, that's basically it. Now I will show you this in unit 2. It's almost the same. And the difference is that we actually don't have this steam uh, inflow. Uh, okay, we have it here. I don't even remember. Uh, I, I don't even look at this things. Okay, let me let me say this. So again, here are the feed water pumps. Here are the condensate pumps. These are the set points. And these are the flows. So both of these flows should be matched. See, feed water is now a little lower. So reactor level will drop while the reactor will grow. So basically what I want to do is open this just a little too much this flows. And they should be matched uh, to condense resting flow. But this condensed resting flow, I think it's fault now. Uh, I never looked at it. Uh, okay, well, it doesn't matter. The technique I use here is a little bit different. Because what I do is I pick up either the hot well or the reactor level. I and I try to keep it constant. You see, it's dropping, so I need to reduce the condensate flow just a little bit. It's still dropping, so let me reduce it a little more. Still dropping. Okay, now it's almost constant. And now, what I want to do is to make the rate of constant. So again, it's dropping, so I have to reduce the feed water flow a little bit. Uh, it's, it will feel much stronger when it changes. Okay. Almost stopped. Oh, now it started to rise. It's very hard to... Maybe we should make more precise valves. Okay, now they are almost constant. Yeah, they will be moving a little, that's natural, but if these two are stationary, so will be the third one. That's basically it. You can check the flows here. They are constant. That's how it works. And again, the, the, the technique is the same. So let's say I want to rise the hot well level and lower the reactor. Yes, so if I want to rise the hot well level, I will want to reduce the condenser outflow and then I will match the other pump so that both flows are identical. So let me reduce this. Now I will reduce uh, this pump is off. I will reduce this. So the flows are almost identical now. And now, hot well is rising, reactor is dropping. And if you see the right, the reactor, the, the aerator is not constant, it means mm, these flows are not identical. So again, uh, it needs just a slight adjustment. Now it should be okay. Yes, so the technique is identical as in unit 1, it's just, these displays are just a little different. So I won't be going a lot into details in this one, just a matter of experimenting. So let me... Uh, let me level this up again, so I will start with hot well, or I can start with reactor, doesn't matter, okay. So let me add some feed water. Still dropping. Just a little more. Still dropping. Oh, that's too much. 
Well, rising very slowly. Okay, let's. Should be now. Okay, now it's constant. You see, the rotor is dropping, so I need to add a little bit of this condensate pumps. Almost done. Yep. All three are at level. This is okay. Mm, so, next thing which I want to show you here is this makeup and mm, hot water con level control valve. So the makeup valve is used to add some water from these condensate tanks. Let's say that the right one has more water, so I want to use the right one. So here is a selector. And let me open this valve a little bit. So this is really simple. It just increases hot well level, as you can see. doesn't change anything, it just adds external water, this will drop, the hot well level is rising, ok, let me close it, so this is how you can add water to the system, if you want to remove water from the system, it's a, a bit more tricky, so let me explain this, so this valve is located between the hot well and the deuterator. So it doesn't take water neither from hot well, neither from the deurator, it takes water from in between them. So if you open this valve, some of the water that should go into the deurator will be directed into the tank. The left tank is now low on water, so I will use it. Tank number one. So what happens when I open this valve? The hot well level will stay the same because I'm not taking any water from the hot well. But the deurator level will drop because the deurator is not getting enough water. Let, let me show this to you. So I open it just a little. You see, the deurator started to drop. But at this moment, the deurator is low. I actually want hot well to drop. So what do I do? Well, that's, you can figure it out. I just open more of the condensate pump. So now you see the hot well is dropping, the rotor is rising. I can open this control valve more to make the rotor level constant. And this way I'm just dumping water basically from the hot well. These two are more or less constant. And what if I wanted to drop water from the reactor, not from the hot well? It's the same thing. It's, it's just a matter of setting up those uh, flows. So if you want to reduce reactor, you have to reduce feed water. Let me reduce it. Now re reduce the condensate to match the deurator. As you can see, these two are more or less constant. Now we are damping water from the reactor. So yeah, it might. Uh, I can understand that this might seem a bit <laughs> puzzling at this moment if you are seeing this for the first time, but if you think about it logically, I mean, it's pure logic. Yes, if you want to reduce reactor, you just reduce feed water, and then you have excess of water somewhere, so you can, like, maybe dump some more. Now we are, half of the water is now damped from the system. 
by the price of reducing reactor level. Let's see, this is this is growing. Okay, we will have an alarm soon, so let me close this. Add water. So let me now try to set this at the proper positions. It's the easiest if I set up the reactor and the aerator, because then I can always add water to the hot well directly. So you see I'm trying to have these flows matched, even though I'm not looking at them, I'm looking at how this values change. So I'm trying to level the feed water first. Also the rotor has a little too much water, so let me reduce it. Once the feed water hits the blue line, I want to stop the changes. Okay, almost constant now. I have to reduce this because the writer got too much water. Let me correct this a little less. Now I need to add a little bit. It's almost perfect now. So now I'm now I'm trying to uh, set this. This is the most difficult one to set correctly because it feels the changes much more. So now it's dropping. I will add just a little of the condensate flow to stop. very very slowly. I, I don't think I can set it up better. I would be rising. Okay. Now let's say that let's let's assume these are almost constant. So now you see we have some surplus in water here. I will use this makeup valve again to level hot well now. Almost perfect. And that's how we work with this stuff. Of course, if we change reactor power now, so if we change reactor power, you will notice immediately that reactor will start dropping more water is boiling, hot will start rising, so again, as you remember, we have to add some feed water and in the same moment add some condensate to keep the rotor leveled. Of 
because you can always watch here a little bit more feed water and of course as the power rises we have to keep opening the valves to match the increasing flow okay I think that's everything I have to show you oh, okay I didn't mention one thing you may have noticed that I didn't use this makeup pump because you don't have to use it as long as there is vacuum in the condenser the condenser then the hot well will suck the water from the Condenses, condensed storage tanks but if for any reason you would have to change the you would have to you, you would want to add water to hot well when the reactor is cool and you don't have a vacuum in the condenser then procedure is the same but you have to enable this pump that's basically it Okay, I, I, I think that's all I wanted to show you. Hopefully, operating this will be much more fun to you. Uh, I really like operating this. Okay, I've enabled auto control, it's a bit crazy. But it should stabilize in a moment. So, yeah, have fun. Thank you for watching the video.